It's always been possible to customise the Quartix system, allowing each customer to tailor the reporting tools to best suit the needs of their company. With the addition of the new Quartix dashboards, we've gone one step further towards giving our customers control over how they view their fleet's activities in real time. The Quartix dashboard is currently made up of five components, each using simple and clear graphs to display a variety of live fleet information. Individually, each one is itself customisable. The five components are usage profile, number of calls, usage, vehicles off-site and real-time status. Each component offers a quick and comprehensive view of the most vital functions of a mobile fleet, making staying on top of operations easier than ever. By building your own dashboard, you get to choose your own combination of components, reporting on either your entire fleet or specific groups of vehicles. The dashboard will routinely update to show the current status of all parameters being monitored. Once you have created your own layout, it can be saved under a customised name for future use. There is no limit to the number of dashboard setups you can have on your account. Many more components will be released. Just look out for our product updates for more information. The following sections of the video will further demonstrate the dashboard's functionality, explaining each component in more detail. Hello and welcome to the training video. This video is a guide to the use of the new Quartix dashboard. Included in the video is a description of each component and a demonstration on how to use the system, including saving and sharing dashboards and configuring components. The Quartix dashboard can be accessed from the top level in the main menu. When the dashboard option has been selected, the user will be presented with a blank dashboard and a number of options for creating, selecting, saving and sharing dashboards. Several options are available for creating and saving a new dashboard. Firstly, you can create a new dashboard layout. This option is selected when the user clicks the Create New button. At this point, this window will be presented, allowing the user to enter a name for the dashboard and to select one of the optional dashboard types, either the default dashboard or a completely blank dashboard. As an alternative, the user can simply start adding components to the blank dashboard and then select Save As in order to save the dashboard with a new name. To add a new component, click on the large plus sign in the dashboard screen, then select a component from the drop-down list. When the components have been added, the dashboard can be saved by selecting Save As. At this point, the user will be prompted to name the dashboard and save or cancel. You can also select a dashboard from a list of existing versions. An existing dashboard layout can be selected from those already saved. To do this, the user would click on the dashboard name in order to select the drop-down list. This will be listed as blank when opening the dashboard for the first time. It may be necessary for a customer to use standard dashboards shared between users. In addition to saving the dashboard, there is also a feature which enables the user to share the dashboard between different users. To do this, simply click the share button on the top and select the user or users to share the dashboard with. When a dashboard is shared with another user, 
It will appear in their drop down list of dashboards with a small curved arrow icon to indicate that it has been shared. Any changes to the configuration of the components or the layout of the dashboard will be shared by any users who this dashboard is shared with. In addition, if the dashboard is deleted by clicking the bin icon next to the name, it will be deleted from the list of any users who also have access to this. However, in this situation, a message will be displayed prior to deletion. Dashboards can be saved when they are new, or the layout or configuration of one of the components has changed. There are two ways to save a dashboard. Firstly, by clicking Save As. This feature will create a new version of the current dashboard and save it under a new name selected by the user. This option is on the top left of the dashboard screen. Secondly, is by clicking the Save Dashboard button. This option is available when a dashboard has been already saved and given a name. The button on the top right of the dashboard display is normally greyed out unless there has been a change to the dashboard layout or configuration of one of the components. The Save Dashboard button is available after any change to the screen or layout. When the user has clicked on the Save Dashboard button, the dashboard will be saved and the button will become greyed out again. The dashboard can be displayed in full screen mode by selecting the double arrow option in the top right hand side of the screen. This will minimise the banner section to allow a full screen dashboard view. Clicking the option button again will toggle the display back to normal view. The next section of the video describes the common features which may be found across the individual components making up the dashboard. Just to note, some common features are not applicable to all dashboard components. For example, date range selection is not applicable to a component such as real-time status because it only looks at the current data. So for those components which are applicable for data range selection, the user can click on the date range options at the top left of the component and select from the options available, for example today or this week. Today is the default for most of the components. Selecting one of the options will change the date range for the component. This configuration will be saved when the dashboard is saved. By default, the components will display data for all vehicles. However, if the user clicks on the All Vehicles Selection option, the list of vehicles and groups will be displayed. The appropriate vehicle or group can be selected in order to limit the view of this component to a specific vehicle or group. At the top right hand side of each dashboard component is an icon for additional options. When this is selected, icons for additional options will be displayed and you just need to select the cross to hide these icons. So first is the help icon. This option provides help information about each component, its features and configuration. Secondly is configure. This option provides access to the configuration settings for each dashboard component. It may be greyed out as configuration settings are not available for all dashboard components. Next is drag to move. This option enables the user to move the dashboard component tile to a different position on the dashboard. The other dashboard components will be moved around automatically when this option is used. Last is Delete. This option deletes the dashboard component and all its settings from the dashboard. Care must be taken when using this on a shared dashboard 
as selecting it will delete the dashboard components and its settings for all users who share this dashboard. I will turn now to describe the usage profile component. So this component shows the percentage of vehicles in use for each hour of the current day when used for the current live status or each day of the week if selected. The user can select the usage profile for today or this week from the drop down option as well as selecting different vehicles or groups or all vehicles. The charts show the usage profile either for today in each one hour period or for this week in each four hour period, depending on the option selected. Each chart will display the number of vehicles with any movement events, shown as percentage of selected vehicles in each period. A trip event is one with an ignition on, plus movement beyond the trip threshold value. The image on screen shows the usage profile today in each one hour period. The next image shows the usage profile for this week in each four hour period. Clicking on any bar will list the vehicles in use and not in use during that period in separate scrollable lists. The user will then be able to click on a vehicle to view the daily log or latest location. The number of calls component is a speedometer or dial showing the number of calls made compared to a target. The user can select the number of calls for today or for this week from the drop down option as well as selecting different vehicles or groups or all vehicles. A call is deemed to be a stop at a different place from where the vehicle was kept at the start of its shift, for example the overnight location. For the required time period, count the number of stops that are not at the overnight location. The user will need to define a target for the number of calls per vehicle, and the total calls will be calculated from that and the number of vehicles. The scale will be from zero to twice the target level, such that the target level is at the top. Until the alert start time, the dial will show neutral colours for the number of calls. Once the alert start time has been reached, the dial will show an alert colour below the target level and a colour above it. The image on screen illustrates the number of calls which are above the target. The number in the centre of the dial is the total number of calls and the smaller number at the top is the target number set by the user. And the next image shows the alert situation when number of calls are below the target. Just a note, if a vehicle is off the road due to maintenance, then this will affect the group reporting for figures for this dashboard component. The administrator would have to either remove the vehicle from the group or change the reporting parameters to reflect the new target. The image on screen now shows the configuration parameters for this component. The earliest start time is the earliest time at which the alert will be displayed. This will avoid having alerts at the start of the day when all vehicles will be below target. The target level is the target number of calls per vehicle in a day. And the calls included are stops with ignition on and with ignition off only. There is a list of calls per vehicle available, displayed in ascending order of number of calls. This list contains a link to daily log and route map for each vehicle. The usage component is a pie chart showing vehicles used and unused over the period. The user can select the usage for today or this week from the drop down option 
as well as selecting different vehicles or groups, or all vehicles. The component will show the percentage of vehicles in use or not in use on the dial, plus the actual number of vehicles in use or not in use on the legend. This can operate in two modes, or if both are displayed, then the configuration options must be consistent. For example, set threshold to be 80% or number of vehicles in use. A vehicle will be deemed to have been used if there has been trip exceeding the trip threshold in the period. However, the trip threshold is configurable via the configuration menu, and if set to zero, then vehicle use will be determined by an ignition on event. Before the alert start time, both sectors will be in a neutral colour, for example blue. If the required target has not been met at or after the alert start time, the unused sector will be shown in an alert colour such as red. The image on screen shows the usage pie chart when there is an alert status. This shows that 36% of vehicles are in use, the target utilisation has been set to 50% and therefore an alert condition has been met. This is evident by two things. Firstly, the red colour of the in-use vehicles segment of the pie chart. And secondly, the small alert flag symbol which shows the target flag at 50% and the relative position on the scale bar of the actual utilisation percentage currently at 36%. The latter here providing a visual reference of the actual value to the target value. The image on screen now shows the configuration parameters for this component. So the alert, uh, earliest alert time is the earliest time at which the alert will be displayed. This will avoid having alerts at the start of the day when all vehicles will be below target as before. And the utilisation target is the target percentage of vehicles utilised. Clicking on any sector will list the vehicles in use and not in use during that period in separate scrollable lists. The user will then be able to click on a vehicle to view the live tracking or daily log for that vehicle. The vehicles off-site component is a speedo type dial showing the number of vehicles that are away from their overnight location now to give a measure of fleet activity. The user can select the vehicles off-site for different vehicles or groups or all vehicles by selecting the drop-down option. For a vehicle to be considered off-site, its latest event must be at a different place from the overnight location. The scale will be from zero to the number of vehicles in the selected group. There are two sectors, above and below the number of vehicles defined as the target percentage. The two sectors of the scale will be in a neutral colour outside of the alert period, or if the alert conditions are not met. For example, in the image on screen, the off-site target is 35%, indicated by the thin line on the chart, and the current number of vehicles off-site is at 41%. If the alert conditions are met within the alert period, the dial will show an alert colour below the target level and a neutral colour above it. For example, in the next image, the off-site target is 45%, and the current number of vehicles off-site is shown at 41%. The image now on screen shows the configuration parameters for this component. The alert start time is the earliest time at which the alert will be displayed. The alert end time is the latest time at which the alert will be displayed. This will avoid having alerts at the end of the day when all vehicles will be returning to the depot. The off-site target is the target for percentage of vehicles off-site during the alert period. 
clicking on any bar will list the vehicles on site and off site during that period in separate scrollable lists. The user will then be able to click on a vehicle to view the live tracking or daily log for that vehicle. The real-time status component summarises what all vehicles are doing now. The user can select the real-time status for different vehicles or groups, or all vehicles by once again selecting the drop-down option. This component shows the current status of all vehicles in the selected set, derived from the latest event for each vehicle. If a vehicle is parked, then it will be deemed to be off-site if there has been a trip exceeding the trip threshold. However, the trip threshold is again configurable via the configuration menu, and if set to zero, then the vehicle use will be determined by an ignition on event. The image on screen shows the real-time status when there are no alert conditions met. The next image shows the real-time status with one of the alert conditions met, in this case the parked on-site alert. Note the small flag alert icon below the parked on-site legend. The flag alert icon can be seen in the next image. This shows that the percentage of vehicles parked on-site, for example at the depot, is 90%. However, the maximum target for this is set to 80%. Therefore, the icon below shows on a scaled view the target flag at 80% and the actual value in red, exceeding this slightly. This gives a visual indication of the actual value against the target. The image now displayed shows the configuration parameters for this component. The alert start time is the earliest time at which the alert will be displayed. The alert end time is the latest time at which the alert will be displayed. Moving above is the target percentage of vehicles to be considered moving at the current time. If the percentage falls below this value, then there will be an alert condition. Stationary below is the target percentage of stationary vehicles. If the percentage value goes above this, then there will be an alert condition. Parked off-site below is the target percentage of vehicles parked off-site. If the percentage value goes above this, there will be an alert condition. And lastly, parked on-site below is the target percentage of vehicles parked on-site. And again, if the percentage value goes above this, there will be an alert condition. Clicking on any sector will list the vehicles listed in that sector in a scrollable list. The image on screen shows the vehicles parked on site. The user will then be able to click on a vehicle to view the live tracking or daily log for that vehicle. This video is just a quick overview of the dashboard components and their functions. Please do not hesitate to get in touch if you would like one of the team to talk you through any part or all of this feature. Many thanks for watching.